Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in today's lesson, I'd like to take just a few minutes to introduce the concept of inductance. Our objectives include calculating the magnitude and sense of the electromotive force in an inductor through which a specified changing current is flowing, and also to derive and apply the expression for the self-inductance of a long solenoid. So let's start by talking about what inductance is. Self-inductance, given the symbol capital L, is the ability of a circuit to oppose the magnetic flux produced by the circuit itself. If we have current flowing in a circuit in some way, we're going to be creating a magnetic field. Any changes in that current are going to create changes in the magnetic field. And if we have changes in the magnetic field, we're going to have an induced EMF, an induced potential, that's going to create a current that wants to fight that induced, that changing magnetic flux. The units of self-inductance are Henry's, where one Henry is one volt second per ampere, and self-inductance is purely a function of the circuit's geometry. Now, in most circuits we talk about, typically things that are basically one loop, the self-inductance is so small we can neglect it. But as we talk about circuits that have more and more complex parts, including things like solenoids with many, many loops of wire, thereby creating a much higher flux through them, all of a sudden the inductance may not be negligible anymore. So let's talk about how we calculate self-inductance. To begin with, self-inductance is the ratio of the magnetic flux, phi b, to the current flowing through that circuit. To the current flow. And if that's the case, we could then go and apply Faraday's law to say that the induced EMF is minus the time rate of change of the flux. But we know from our previous expression the definition of self-inductance that the magnetic flux is going to be the inductance times the current. So I could rewrite this then as the induced EMF is equal to minus the time derivative of our self-inductance times our current flow, which the self-inductance is going to be a constant, so I could pull that out of the derivative sign and say that the induced electromotive force, the induced EMF, is going to be equal to minus L di dt. And that's an important formula and probably a really good one to remember. As well, we could talk about the energy stored in, the, in a inductor. Just like with the capacitor, we had energy stored in the electric field. In an inductor, we're going to have energy stored in the magnetic field. And the energy that's stored in an inductor, we can find using the formula energy stored in an inductor, UL, is one-half L I squared. And notice the parallel to our study of capacitors and the energy in capacitors. Okay, let's take a look at the self-inductance of a solenoid. We're asked to calculate the self-inductance of a solenoid of radius r and length l with n number of windings. Well, to begin with, we know that the magnetic field inside that solenoid is equal to the number of windings divided by the length times mu naught, the permeability of free space, times the current flow. And if you don't know where we got that, go back and review our Ampere's Law video, where we derived that specifically. Well, if that's the case, now let's take a look at the flux. If we have n number of windings, the flux is going to be capital N, the number of windings, times the magnetic field strength, B, times the area of each of those windings, which will be pi times r squared. So then if we want to know the self-inductance, well, in that case, our self-inductance, L, is going to be equal to, well, it's our magnetic flux divided by our current flow, which in this case, our magnetic flux, phi b, we just said was n b pi times r squared 
all divided by our current or we have N and I'm going to replace now my magnetic field with what I've already calculated the magnetic field inside the solenoid capital N over L mu naught I we still have our pi we still have our squared all divided by our current flow so now it's just a matter of simplifying this a little bit I have current there and there those make a ratio of one which implies then that our self inductance of our solenoid is just going to be well, we'll have n times n n squared the number of windings divided by the length times mu naught times pi times r squared so there we go the self inductance of a solenoid of radius r and length l with n number of windings n squared over l mu naught pi r squared let's see if we can't apply this as I take a look here I have a giant solenoid it has 3400 turns of wire and past that I'm gonna have to get out my ruler and let's see what we can find out first thing we know is that n our number of windings is 3400 now we're also gonna need to know the length so I'll take and I will measure the length of my solenoid uh, I guess it would look like this from your perspective and I come up with nine centimeters so that's going to be point zero nine meters and I also need to know the radius so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the diameter of my solenoid and as I look at that it looks like its diameter is about 11 centimeters so if I have a diameter of 11 centimeters that means the radius is five and a half centimeters or 0.055 meters now I can calculate the self inductance of that solenoid L we just determined is n squared over its length L mu naught pi r squared which is going to be 3400 windings squared divided by we said L was 0.09 meters times our constant mu naught times pi a constant times our radius 0.055 meters squared which when I put that all into my calculator I come up with a self inductance of about 1.53 Henry's that's a pretty big self inductance all right we will talk more about these solenoids and how they play into circuits as we talk about inductance especially as we talk about RL and LC circuits in our next lectures but hopefully that at least gets you a good start on the concept of inductance self-inductance and how to find the self-inductance of a solenoid if you need more help or are looking for more information please come visit aplusphysics.com thanks everyone and make it a great day